do this work. It sounds weird. It sounds obvious. Like, oh yeah, of course you're solving, they're paying you to solve a particular problem, but we actually forget that. And that's why our marketing just often doesn't, doesn't convert. And, um, and so to, to answer your question in a roundabout way that some of the mistakes we make is not fo- focusing on those fundamentals, find out your, about your market, research them, get to know them better than they know themselves. Then you come over to your solution and f- and now that you know the market, you're great, now you can communicate your solution in a way that resonates. And that's what attracts them to you to want to work with you or buy your, um, buy your product. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Lumi Lewis, and today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Luke Charlton. Now, he decided to leave his comfortable job of six figures, work for the government, and move halfway across the country, the world, actually, to start an online business, and just to realize that this thing is harder than it looks. And so (laughs) he has learned, Luke learned some stuff along the way, and he's been able to formulate a formula for lack of better words to get um, others to actually succeed online and grow their businesses so that's what we're going to dive into today we're going to learn about his um, mistakes his wins and be able to figure out how to navigate this online space so with no further ado um, Luke welcome to the show Um, pleasure to be here Lenid Yes, it's an honor to have you. I know you're calling in um, from London. Where were you before? No, I'm actually in Australia. I'm back in Australia now. Okay. So I only lasted about twelve months in <laughs> twelve months in London, and then I had to I had to come back uh, to Australia because I ran out of money. Money basically. Yeah. So I went over with savings and came back uh, in a, in a lot of debt. Yeah, I was gonna say, was it the weather? But it was it was expensive. <laughs> Not not just the weather that drove you out of London. No, well, I'm from Canberra in, in Australia, which is actually <laughs> similar weather to London. Actually, it's very it's very cold in 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 the winter. So that wasn't the weather; it was definitely the lack of money. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's look into the the struggle, right? So the trial and errors that actually led you to bankruptcy, just um, starting your own business and leaving that comfortable cushion job. Not bankruptcy, but close to close to. <laughs> Um, but in terms of, yeah, the struggles, um, there were lots. So I moved to London because I thought, well, the population of London is a lot bigger than Canberra. So that must mean it'd be easy to get clients, right? So more people, more opportunity. But it didn't actually work out that way. So I um, I basically took the, like, throw like throw spaghetti at the wall and see what, you know, see what sticks approach, basically, to get clients. So I, meaning I did, like, a ton of different strategies. So I did networking five nights per week um, because you could do that many networking events in, in London. I um, like did webinars, LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups. Uh, I did um, my own workshops, had my own uh, weekly uh, pod- podcast that I was doing. I did email. I did um, uh, like I, when I got, I got desperate, so desperate towards the end of my time in London, I, um, went door, literally door knocking on restaurant doors, um, cold calling uh, to get people to come to one of my events or people that's coaches. So yeah, I did, I did a lot of things in that whole 12 months ago, one, one new client. So I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't really that good at, at marketing my own business at that stage. This is a, a decade now. So I've been in, been in business a decade. So it was a, a long time ago, but yeah, I learned a lot about what, what doesn't work when it comes to growing your business. Mm, let's dive into those. What don't work? What doesn't work? Um, so one of the mistakes that I made, and I see a lot of coaches do it, um, an expert, because I work with coaches, that's why I say coaches, but um, same applies to um, uh, a lot of business owners, is that we we chase the bright, shiny objects, right? So whatever the latest and greatest marketing fad or People have heard the word funnel now. The word funnel is becoming quite popular. So the most kind of latest and greatest funnel. So is it the latest Facebook group strategy or webinar strategy or upsells and downsells writing a book? And and we think that 
the reason why we're not successful is because, you know, we don't have the latest funnel or the latest tech or not <clears throat> using the latest SMS strategy or whatever it is. When really a new funnel or a new strategy won't fix a broken message. What makes your campaign to convert? And this is what I wasn't focusing on in the beginning uh, as much as I should have been is just uh, having a great message. Meaning a lot of, you know, us business owners, we forget that business is actually, when you break it down into the fundamentals, it's actually very simple. It's like, you've got a, a market with a problem and then you've got a, you've got a solution, right? And we often forget about the market because we're so focused on our solution, our product, our service. And we just talk about all the features and all the cool stuff about the product or service. And we forget that we're actually trying to communicate with an actual market. So the market is number one. You want to learn about the market first before you actually even think, think about your, your, your product or your service in terms of the features or anything, because you need to match that with the market. So you learn who is your market and you know, the dream client avatar is the typical process, but you've got to choose the market. Who's your dream client or customer? What are the biggest challenges, frustrations, but most importantly, what's that number one problem that your, your product or service is actually solving for them? And again, we don't, do this work. It sounds weird. It sounds obvious. Like, oh yeah, of course you're solving, they're paying you to solve a particular problem, but we actually forget that. And that's why our marketing just often doesn't, doesn't convert. And, um, and so to, to answer your question around about way that some of the mistakes we make is not fo focusing on those fundamentals, find out your, about your market, research them, get to know them better than they know themselves. Then you come over to your solution and and now that you know the market, you're great, now you can communicate your solution in a way that resonates. And that's what attracts them to you to want to work with you or buy your um buy your product from you. That, so that seems obvious. That seems obvious to a lot of people, but I sense there's some fear around it. There's some fear, either it could take too long, a uh, fear of approaching the target market. What what's your take on that? Fear in what, like fear in taking too long to research the market or, mm -hmm. yeah. well, I mean, as I said, yeah. it's just something that, I mean, it might, it doesn't really, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how long it takes because it's something that you have to do to be successful. So even if it took like 12 months to do this, you have to do this to be successful. You have to know your market so you can communicate to them in a way that makes them go, oh yeah, I want that product or service. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't take 12 months, but I'm just saying, yeah, the, the, this is a step that we all need to take and, you know, to research your market effectively, I don't know, it might take a couple of weeks to do it properly. I mean, you can get a lot from um, just doing research on the internet without actually speaking to your target market. That's yeah. the first level is just doing research. Um, like in Facebook, like what is the market actually saying about their challenges and problems like in, in Facebook groups or um, uh, different forums or whatever, right. Where they're communicating. That's one level. And then the next level is actually getting on the phone and speaking with them, which is, an, it's just a, a much more in-depth level of research. You get to know your market on a different level when you actually speak to them on the phone. And even if you're not selling a service, because as a service professional, you, you're often speaking to people on the phone anyway, like as through in a sales call or whatever. But if you're like an e-commerce store, I recommend getting on the phone with your customers to learn more about them and understand how they communicate their challenges in, in you know, in their own words. Um, so that's the type of research I'm talking about. And then you take that research and put it into, okay, here's my avatar. Here's like kind of like an amalgamation or, or an average of all the research I've done. And this is who I'm trying to market to. And you just, that's your bullseye, right? So you write your message to that, to that person. So um, yeah, so maybe the fear is around also clarity on not knowing how to do it, but it's the, it really is just like an elbow grease type thing where, it's not some secret research strategy. It's literally just getting quote unquote dirty and doing the hard work to find out about the market. So going into forums, getting on the phone, all that stuff. There's nothing as a secret about it. It's just doing stuff that other business owners don't necessarily want to do. But as I said, it's, if you want to be successful and stand out in the market, get high paying clients or customers, then you've got to research the market. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's different ways of doing it. There's, um, you can do the surveys, you can do, um, like mm -hmm. you said, the forum, get on a Facebook groups, um, yep. send out a poll. I mean, there's options to kind of get the ball rolling to, yep. to negate, negate that, that fear. Absolutely. Yeah. Polls. Another great one is, um, that I love is going to, um, like Amazon and looking up books on the topic and just looking at okay, what are the books called is, you know, how to get X results. And then I look in, open up the book 
and look at the chapter titles because often the chapter titles are like mini headlines, right? And they tell you a lot about the different challenges the market has because if there's a chapter on a particular, you know, subtopic, it's like, oh, they must be frustrated with this and this and this. So the chapter titles will tell you a lot. Um, and then also the reviews are an amazing place to get specific language. Like, hey, I love this book because it helped me with X, Y, Z. Or, hey, I like this book because it helped me with X, Y, Z, but it didn't really help me in this area that I really wanted to blow up. So you get to learn a lot about the frustrations and more kind of specific challenges the market just is just struggling with just with those reviews. And then going to your competitors and looking at their testimonials and their messages and what they're what they say in their advertising. So that's what yeah, that's how you get a good overview of the market before you before you go to market. Yeah, that is very insightful. And that works very well, I can see, for a service, somebody going into coaching. What about e-commerce? What about a product, a physical product? Exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly the same. It's, it's, the process is not different at all. So you still you know, get on the phone with your customers, still research them the same way. You um, you can do polls, you can do surveys. Uh, you, um, yeah, I said you can look up uh, Amazon um, books and that type of thing. But at the end of the day, like an e a product is still solving a problem for a mm -hmm. customer. So again, business, whether you're selling a physical product or a service, you're solving a problem for a for a market. So you've got to research that market and um make sure you know them inside and out before you email sorry before you um yeah start marketing to them with your physical products yeah yeah and gotta know the pain point and how to speak their language it's almost i heard somewhere uh while i'm marketing you have to jump into the conversation already happening in their heads yeah like, yeah i believe that's um i think that might have been joe sugarman that said that he's a he's a copywriter a famous copywriter but yeah that's a that's a copywriting saying is, yeah, you enter the conversation that's already going on in their mind. Uh, and as a business, we business owners, we often don't do that. What we do is we look at our features of our product or service and we start talking features and the, the customer's like, I don't know what this means. And they just <laughs> kind of ignore your message. You know? So yeah. forget about your features in the beginning, just focus on the market and your message will become a lot stronger. Um, that is wise. Think, that is wise. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Let's talk um, about branding and messaging is key. Let's talk about the formula to running an online successful business, coaching business at that. Um, the formula. <laughs> well, I, we just went through about 80% of the success of, of running a successful business, a coaching business as well, is, as I said, know the market, and then the second step, which we haven't touched on too much, is the solution. Another way of saying that is your offer. Right. So you need to have a very strong offer. I, I interviewed a guy. So I have a podcast that where I interview other coaches, successful coaches, and he's a real estate coach. And I actually, I have a pod, another podcast that I do a daily podcast just for me, for personal one. And I did an episode on this, just the last episode, actually. And I called it the million dollar per hour coach. And I, um, I was saying how I was interviewing this, this coach uh, last week on, on that interview podcast and he has an offer right so you got the problem the market with the problem and then there's a, a your your solution or your offer like what's the when i think of the way that i think of an offer is like what's the result that you're promising yes it has the price yes it has all the coaching sessions but the main thing that you are really selling is the result like even with an e-commerce product like what is it actually helping them achieve what's that result mm -hmm. that's the offer so his offer was um because he's a real estate coach. His offer is make money in real estate within 72 hours without risking your own capital. So people don't actually have to invest their own money and he will split the profits with them 50-50. And so we dived into that on, on the podcast interview and just, uh, I'm just curious, like how do you even, how does he even make money with that and how does that work? Yeah. Um, but the point but the point is, he has, it's an amazing offer, right? Make money in real estate within 72 hours without risking any of your own capital. And so he, the way that he came up with that offer is, again, he actually focused on the market. He learned about the market. He looked at, okay, what are the competitors offering? What what am I offering? I'm offering kind of like, he was offering at the time, like something kind of similar to his competitors, not like anything that stood out. And so he thought, okay, what do my clients really want? They don't want to like risk their capital. They they want to make money as soon as possible. So how can I you know, make that uh, make that possible? So he he kind of, created a system to, to allow that. I'm not going to go into the system. That's not the point. It's mm -hmm. 
the point is he saw what the market wanted and he gave them that with like this amazing offer. So he, he thought, you know, he iterated on his offer and that's literally what he came up with at the end. And that offer has generated in him millions and millions of um, dollars and continues to do that, you know, every single year. And it's literally one sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Make money in real estate within 72 hours without risking your own capital. And so that's why my podcast episode where I was talking about it um, was called the million dollar per hour coach is that if you spend time just, you know, coming up with a great offer, and again, it's an iterative process, but, but the time that you spend on coming up with that solution, like your amazing offer, that is, you know, that that time can be worth millions and millions of dollars to you over the years. I said, it's just one mm-hmm. sentence. So that's why you're the million dollar coach because it doesn't, you might be working on it for maybe whatever it is, 10, 20 hours, but over your lifetime, it could be worth millions and millions of dollars or it should be if you come up with a, with a strong offer. So the, the, the point is, coming back to your question, if you want to be successful, the first step is research the market inside and out, know the competitors, know the dream client, know their wants and their fears and their frustrations. And that, then the next step is create an amazing offer, just like the one that I mentioned there. And you'll have people chasing you down. Like for me, my offer is I will book you 20 appointments um, I will get you 20 appointments per month within 90 days, right? Or I'll give you give you a refund plus I will cover your ad spend. Okay, that's the offer for my um, uh, agency that helps coaches get appointments with with advertising. Low risk, very low risk. For yeah, exactly the, right. right. So I'm giving them what they what they want. Um, so that that's a very strong offer that's done really really well for me as well. And it's again, it's just like literally one sentence. Like, yes, again, there's all the deliverables as a part of that, which Mm -hmm. I explain on the sales call and everything when they sign up. But the point is your offer, your solution is is like, that's 80% of your success there. Know the market, who's your market and what's your offer. Spend time on those two things, 80% of your success. And then the rest takes care of itself. So as you can see, like with an offer, like like I just communicated for me and that other guy, it, it like the marketing, it's, you know, you just kind of put that in front of people and they just like, you know, they, they get attracted to that. So that that's when your marketing and selling becomes so much easy because you know that once you get on a sales call with with them, like you're leading them to a very strong offer. And so that increases your conversion. So you don't have to be that good at selling when you've got a strong offer. So, you know, generating leads is much easier because you've got such a strong offer. So it's all about the offer. And again, we forget about this because <clears throat> there's all this upsells and downsells and complicated funnels <laughs> and tech. And we think that's what makes us successful. And we forget that, no, it's a problem and a solution that's all business is the other stuff is like automations and stuff. I use that, but that's like, that enhances your offer, right? That, that enhances your research. If you don't do your research and you have a crap offer, it's just going to, it's going to enhance a crap offer. So it's just meaning it's not going to do anything for you. Um, and so that you spend your time there and then you add all the other cool tech stuff. That's bells and whistles. Relax. All the other Sorry? bells and whistles, and then you yeah. add the bells and whistles um, because if it's not right, I agree with you. Then they won't convert. You'll just have people going through your 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 automations, your funnel that are not actually yep. curating any gen revenue. Yeah. So an example of that is um like a big part of what I teach coaches is email, like your email follow up in place. But I say, look, just do you just do an email like auto responder, so it automatically goes out. You know but just do 30 emails. So just start with 30 emails. So one email per day for 30 days and just see if you can get that converting first before you even worry about that, the rest mm-hmm. of the emails, just get that converting because, you know, if you do like a hundred emails or whatever um, and it doesn't convert, then you have to go back and like redo all of them. So get it converting, find out what your message is that converts the offer right at the end of the emails. And then you can go and expand that if you want to, to a longer sequence. So yeah, find out what your message is, Get that converting and then add all the bells and whistles later, as you said. Yeah. Um, I like the, t- the title of your last um, episode, the million dollar uh, um, coach, our coach. Yeah. So what do you find is a big time waster um, for a lot of the sessions? Um, people go into either clients are not prepared or there's just that lack of clarity that takes that eats away at the time. A big time waster. Um, I'll t- yeah, I mean, as I said, like thinking that a broken funnel is <laughs> probably the biggest one is thinking a thinking a new funnel is gonna gonna fix your message, right? So bouncing, this is what I did. So I'm 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 telling this from experience of the mistakes that I made. 
um, thinking that, yeah, a new funnel. And the reason why that's a time waster is because every time you change to a new funnel, you've got to set up all the tech and you've got to learn the system and then you've got to put your message in. Then you've got to run ads to it or get traffic to it somehow. And then, you know, you're often on that for a few months, then like, oh, no, that's not good. And then you bounce so bounce to the next strategy. And then it's the opportunity cost of, you know, it's, it's an extremely time-consuming and expensive process. So that is one of the biggest... Um, one of the biggest time wasters, I would say, is just bouncing from different strategies. Um, this the next one is a bit more coach uh, specific, but I guess you could apply the principle to e- e-com like physical products, and that is giving the the pros um, giving clients like more coaching than what they need. So coaches um, or even service professionals they think that by giving the client extra sessions of whatever it is coaching sessions, consulting sessions, or whatever that that's going to make their offer seem more valuable, right? So remember, at the end of the day, your 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 customer or client is buying a result. They're buying that offer, right? They get get make money in 24 hours or whatever the offer is, right? So the way I come up with the offer first, like the result, and then you go, okay, what's the least amount of deliverables, whatever that is, okay. physical product, um, uh, coaching sessions, consulting sessions, whatever. What's the least amount that I need to give this client to get that result. Cause they don't, they don't want to be on more. Like if, if let's say um, it takes six sessions to get the result, whatever the result is, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, whatever that result is. It only takes six sessions. Like if it was totally efficient, but you give them 12 sessions. Well, now you're jumping on an extra six sessions that they don't need and that you don't need to be on. So you're wasting their time and you're wasting your time. But here's the thing. If you give them 12, They'll jump on like they'll want to jump on those sessions because they'll feel like you know they've paid for them, mm-hmm. right? And so they want to get their most money value out of their um out of their program. So the point is, I always start with like, what's the offer? And like, and then I work backwards. Like, okay, what's the least amount of sessions or access to me that they need to get that result in my one-on-one or group or Facebook course, pro, whatever it is, however you want to deliver that. Um, so that's a big time waster as well as just um giving too much that doesn't serve you or the client so how do you apply good. that for e-commerce um yeah probably pro- um features that are related to the so a really great example that i like is um so i use basecamp now basecamp's not an e-commerce product but it's it's like a SaaS company right it's not like a coaching business but if you if anyone knows basecamp they've there's a they've written a, a great book um uh, uh, about how they kind of, the philosophy they use to create Basecamp. So there's a few different, I think there's Basecamp 1. I'm not sure if that's still alive anymore, but there's Basecamp 2 and Basecamp 3. Basecamp 3 is, I don't really like it, but Basecamp 2 I use in my agency. I like it because it's really simple. Now, their philosophy is similar in that they rarely add new features, right? Because a lot of other platforms like Asana and um possibly like Trello to a certain extent is they customers will write in and they'll go, we want this, we want this, we want this. And it becomes very bloated. And, and ClickFunnels did this in the beginning with their SaaS. They just added way too many features and Russell Russell spoke about how that wasn't great. And they kind of started to actually pair, mm-hmm. remove features because it, it, it streamlines things. And actually you just kind of give people the core of like what they actually need to get the result that you're promising, which is to create an amazing funnel for ClickFunnels or for Basecamp, it's just to manage your client projects. And as soon as you start adding all these extra features that they don't need, it becomes bloated and confusing and it starts to actually serve less people, if that makes sense, because you're just putting too much into it. So that's how, to answer your question, that that principle could apply to SaaS companies or e-commerce stores. It's like these extra features that you want to add to your product, whatever that is, is that for like a minute percentage of your audience mm-hmm. or is it actually, you know, enhancing that result is it making the result that core result that you're promising um for your for your customer right because you've got the main problem and then you've got your solution that's what each product or service solves a main problem yes there are side frustrations and benefits but you really always want to focus on that and adding an extra feature sometimes can can take away from the effectiveness of your product in getting that that initial core result that you're promising does that make sense yeah and i agree with you Luke. it devalues it um, in a way, it's just yeah. too much, and that it, it ties it right back around to where we started about the branding and the getting the message right, and, and actually knowing who your avatar, your yep. um, who who to reach out to, so that you don't get derailed with yep. the latest um, fad or trying to reach more people. Yep, you know? exactly, exactly. 
Well put. So tell tell us about um, the principles and habits that you have put in place to be successful over, you know, the the last years that you've been doing this as a coach and being able to help others. What's your morning routine like? How do you get up, dress up, and show up? <laughs> I get up about three a.m. every day. Really? What time um, are you going to bed? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the next. That was going to be my next thing. So, but I get to bed early. So I have a uh, a two year old and a a four year old. And I go to bed. So with them, uh, and I started doing it this at the end, at the beginning of 2022, because for years, like I would stay up till you know nine o'clock, nine nine thirty, sometimes ten, but generally around nine nine thirty. And um, I'd always notice that my my energy levels would drop off at seven p.m. Like as once it gets to seven p.m. for whatever reason, um, it they just the, my my mm-hmm. rhythms or whatever just just dives. But what I was doing, I was just kind of ignoring that and just trying to stay awake until until nine. It wasn't like really bad. It's just like, you know, you just become lethargic and tired and you just kind of want to go to bed. But I would always stay up, not watching TV or anything, just, I don't know, whatever, doing whatever. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to listen to my body a bit more and I'll start going to bed when I feel tired to be more in line, in line with my rhythms. And then um, so I started going to bed at 7.30, around 7.38 each day with my kids and I, because I can, because I do that and kind of just go to sleep when I'm tired, I wake up without feeling tired. Um, yes, there are some days I do feel tired, but generally if I, if I eat well and I go to bed at this, at a similar time, I can wake up around 3 a.m. without feeling tired. And that's what happened this morning. Actually, I woke up feeling just like totally awake. Um, and so, yeah, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning. I'm up at 3 a.m. pretty much mo- even Saturday and Sunday, 3 a.m., um, but I go to sleep at the same time. So that's a, that's a routine. I don't, I don't, it's not like a, I'm not a big proponent of like, you have to be up at 3am. Otherwise you won't be successful. Or like, you know, if you're not up at 3am or 4am or 5pm or 5am, sorry, then you won't be successful. It's just like, you know, you get up when, go to sleep when you're tired and wake up, you know, when, when you're refreshed, but when you are awake, you, you can't, that's when you want to focus on, on work. It's like, Success isn't tied to the time that you wake up. That's uh, silly. Right. Same with like things like meditation. You don't need to meditate. Like, yes, it's great if you do, like I do it every now and then, but, you know, waking up early, meditating, they won't be successful, but um, finding out what works for you so that you can put in um, effective hours when you do work, I think is what's most important. Because in the, the day, we have to take action and, and work. We have to do so. What mm-hmm. Do what works for you so that when you it's time to work, um, you work. So for me, mentally, I've noticed that I like anything before 6 a.m. I, I just I hate folk like I hate looking at emails or anything before 6 a.m. For whatever reason, my mind mentally, I just have this kind of like loathing feeling. So I'm like, okay, I'm, before 6 a.m., I'm not going to do anything. But I do go to the gym and I do other things that I that I am much I'm more happy to do and more motivated to do. But for whatever reason, come 6 a.m., my mind is in that place where I'm, I can sit in front of the computer and start working and, and I'm much more focused and I'm enjoying it a lot more. So I've found out what works for me. I guess that's probably the message here is find what works for you. It is an iter- iterative process. And then when you do sit down to work, like, you know, be focused and, and put in the work. And I, I work in short spurts, so like generally an hour or so, and then I might take a little break and then do another hour or so. That's generally how my mind works best. Yeah, um, there's a lot of time wasted, and I and I and like your your strategy because a lot a lot of time wasted, especially in corporate America, you know, having to be there from nine to five, from eight to eight yep. to six. It, like somebody's on internal clock, but not everyone is on the same internal clock. You know, right. circadian rhythm, and so uh, you find a lot of unproductive uh, productivity taking place mm. in in those corporate places. And so when you are your own business owner, it would behoove you to find out you know, what works for you so that you can actually get in alignment with it because you do have to put in those hours, you know, you know, yep. you have to be put in those productive hours. Absolutely. Have to be put in place. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. And so you'll outline that you do work out, you meditate once in a while, but it's that those hours are more self care. It sounds like you know you don't really yeah. get into the the desk area before six, but you are reading, you are doing whatever is to stimulate you mentally. Yeah, so usually I'm just um actually doing. But before I work out, I like to um like stretch a bit. <laughs> Getting older, like my body's not as limber as it, as it once was. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, just uh, stretching before the gym and then going to the gym and then um, like having a shower and getting getting to work. And then my kids will wake up around seven and I'll go make breakfast for them and and then come back to my computer. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That really um, shed some insight. Find out what works for you. Um, go yeah. inward, um, honestly. Yep. Luke, thank you so much for sharing. Um, tell us, how can we connect with you? Where can we find you? Yeah, no problem. Um, probably the best place is, like if you're a, uh, like a coach or a service professional, I have a free guide that might be helpful for you if you're in business. It's called the nine email offers that get clients for free. So the nine email offers that get clients for free. So just go to the number nine, emailoffers.com. So that's number nine, emailoffers.com. And um, you can grab that guide there. Um, if you're not interested in that, then just Google my name and find my website, which is just lukechallen.com. Perfect. Thank you for coming and joining us today. And thank you for sharing, Luke. It's been a pleasure having you on. It's been a pleasure um, being interviewed by you, Lynette. <laughs> Perfect. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.